In this tutorial, I'm going to show you guys a very interesting library in Python called PyGal. PyGal is used for graphing and plotting, you know, bar charts, line charts, uh, pie charts, bar graphs, histograms, etc., all of that stuff. So that's what PyGal is used for. Now, you may have already heard of a very popular graphing library in Python. It's called matplotlib. I'm sure you guys must have heard of it. But why are we using PyGal instead of matplotlib? Well, I've actually found PyGal to be very interesting. It has a few benefits of using it. Certainly, matplotlib is much more vast and it has a lot of customization and features you won't see in PyGal, but PyGal can give you a pre-built solution, a pre-built graph that looks very nice out of the box. In matplotlib, you, can, you need to customize your plot and graph quite a bit until you actually get something that looks good Okay, or well, you know, it's not necessarily good, more like something that looks uh, very professional and interactive and that kind of thing. PyGal can actually give you graphs that are interactive out of the box, which is very interesting, I think. It also has a whole bunch of different rendering options. You can like render to a file, you can render to a PNG, you can render directly in the browser itself. So these are a few interesting options that I think it's, uh, you know, that PyGal has going for it. And yeah, so I'm just going to introduce you guys to PyGal here and you guys can, you know, make up your minds. What do you think? By the end of this video, we'll see what you guys think about PyGal. All right, so I'm going to start off by just creating a simple pie chart. Okay, let's start with this. I really like the way they've made the pie chart, actually. Okay, so let's talk about that. Pie chart, I'm just making the object here, okay? And then I'm going to set the title, which can be something like popular programming languages. Okay. And over here, I just want to point out that all of the different graphs are all in here, like bar, like bar, like box. And then we can see histogram. We can see graph. Not sure what that is. Horizontal bars. Then yeah, stacked bar charts, line graphs, pie charts, all of this stuff is in the, directly in the PyGal module. Okay, so I'm just gonna actually add in our data because we haven't added our data yet to our pie chart. So I'm gonna iterate over this data over here. Okay, iterate over it like so, like you know, data points, and then do data, and then do pie chart dot add label and data points okay now basically i just i traded over this array and the first one i called label and the second one i called data points and then i added each one of these one by one to our pie chart okay now we're done with, the, with all the you know adding the data and all that now we need to decide how we want to render our pie chart Okay, now we'll start off by just rendering an SVG file. Okay, it's the default kind of thing in PyChart, sorry, in PyGal. To use the other ones, render to browser or render to PNG, you actually need to install some dependencies. Don't worry, I'll cover all that in this tutorial. Okay, so let's just do render to file right now. And I'll do, I'll just call it piechart.svg. That's it. And we run this code now. And by the way, just remember to actually install pygl, you know, using uh, pip install pygl. Just remember to do that. Okay. And my code has executed here and it's generated this piechart.svg file here. I'll just navigate over to the file explorer. And then if I click on this, we can see our nice little graph here okay if i hover over any of these partitions we can actually see the label show up along with the data okay it's pretty cool this way and the way they kind of highlight when you hover over it and over here if i say press on python i can actually remove it from the pie chart okay so you can actually kind of simplify your pie chart if you want to draw attention to certain parts okay it's pretty interesting that way so yeah that's the that's the pie chart
So let's try making a bar chart. All we really need to do is change pi here into bar, okay? And just add the brackets, okay? And that's it. PyGL actually has the same way of adding data, so we don't need to make any changes. I'll just change the names here for our sake, okay? And that's it. Okay, cool. So let's try rendering inside the browser this time. This time it's gonna render directly, okay? So if I just run our code here, it's gonna render inside the browser. Okay, cool, right? And you can disable them the same way that you can with pie charts. Okay, this is a feature that's common to all PyGal charts. Or at least I think so. All right, pretty cool, right? And yeah. So just remember to actually call this command lxml. This is a package that you need, okay, for rendering inside the browser. So just keep that in mind, okay? We can also do render to png, but this won't work on my system right now because I recently changed my system, so I'm kind of missing a lot of important programming packages and stuff. So uh, you'll need to install a bunch of these and I have a newer version of Python. I'm running 3.10 right now. PyGal is works better on the older installations, okay? Uh, there's a long story behind the dependencies and all that, but the gist of it is that if you're running a Python 3.8 and higher version, you might need to, you know, besides installing these, you'll actually need to go and do something else as well. You'll, you'll need to go and, uh, well, you can look it up you'll get an error like Cairo library not found and something else. There's two libraries that will show up as not found. You'll need to go and install something else that actually installs those for you on your system. And then PyGal depends on those to actually make those work, okay? And maybe I'll include a fix to this problem on my website because this is a recent problem that I've just faced because I recently updated my Python version. This didn't happen to me back on Python 3.7. Okay, so if anyone's running an older version of Python, you won't have problems. All right, anyways. Um, yeah, that's mostly it. Let's just discuss one more graph, okay? Let's discuss the line chart, okay? Let me just move a little quickly because we'll need to change the way we add data, okay? Uh, the line chart has a slightly, uh, well, we'll need to change our data set for line chart, obviously, right? So let me just change this to line, Okay, change this to line, change this to line, and change this to line. And I'm just gonna change this back to render to SVG, okay? And one more thing I should mention that if you save it as a PNG, uh, then you won't have that feature, you know, the one where you can interact with the plot, okay? That's a feature that's only available on the SVG plots, not on the PNG ones. So there's not much of a reason to actually, you know, use the PNG ones, but well, yeah, that's up, that's up to you. Okay, line chart dot SVG, and let's begin adding in our data. Line chart dot. Uh, actually, let's put in the labels first. Okay, so map string. Okay, str for string, and then we'll do 2000 and 2011. Oh, sorry, zero. All right, and now I'll do line chart dot add data set one. Okay, none, none, zero, two, five, five, six, four, seven. All right, and yeah, and let's add in two. Okay, so I'll add in one more, and this can be called data set two. Okay and just add in a bunch of numbers in a list okay in the form of a list and just i'm going random here okay how many do we have oh and none here just means you know none okay we can actually do that in pygal i'll show you how this looks let me just make sure that they're equal five and six okay there are 11 in there and there's 11 in here too great so if i run this and this will generate our little SVG. Let me open it up in the file explorer. And there we go. All right. And as usual, this feature is actually kind of handy. You know, this 
show and hide feature. It's actually pretty handy on line charts because of their of their nature. Okay. And they give a very nice highlighting effect when you hover over them. You can just hover over it directly over here if you're having trouble, you know, hovering over them on the graph. Okay. So yeah, pretty cool, right? These are line charts. Okay. Now all graphs in PyGL kind of follow the same trend. Okay. I haven't looked too much into customization with PyGL, but I'm pretty sure matplotlib is probably going to be better for that considering all the features I know that Matplotlib has, all right? So if you're interested in a more detailed, uh, more comprehensive graphing library, you can go check out Matplotlib, which I have a lot of videos on. I'll include a few in the description below. But if you're interested in getting some SVGs out and uh, interested in getting a quick uh, pre-made solution, a quick pre-made graph that looks good, then you can use PyGL, all right? I hope you guys found this video informative. If you guys want to learn more about PyGL, just check out their documentation. They have a bunch of good examples from there. I just looked at those as well. They're pretty informative, all right? And there isn't really much to it. It's just a bunch of basic commands, really. Okay, so I, I just focused mostly on talking about PyGL in this tutorial and the various complexities and the various problems that can come with it. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Keep in mind what I said. And hopefully you guys will have a good time graphing and plotting using matplotlib and pygel or either one of them okay so yeah see you guys in a later video